Hello, my name is Stuart Carroll and welcome to Drone Film Guide, the channel where we learn to fly like filmmakers. In this episode, we have 20 tips for you that are going to get you flying like a professional filmmaker as quickly as possible. They're based on our years of doing this, flying hundreds of commercial flights, and I think you'll find some interesting insights in there. If you like this video, then you might be interested in our longer in-depth tutorials that we are creating at the moment and are going to be hosted on our new website. There's a link in the description to a mailing list that we would encourage you to sign up for so that you can be the first to know when that new content is available. In the meantime, let's crack on with the tips. Number one, fly backwards. We spend more of our time flying backwards than we do flying forwards. Take this as an example, camera's pointing this way, you fly forwards, especially if you're going fast, propellers get in the shot. Fly backwards, you can go as fast as you want, the propellers will never get in the shot. Especially if you're going in sports mode, just look at the props in the shot. Same here, props in the shot. We need to crop that out in post. More props, couldn't be any more obvious. Take this shot though, we structured this flying backwards, the car's down there in the bottom right, full speed sports mode, awesome. Number two, reverse the footage in your editing software. Now having established that flying backwards has advantages over flying forwards sometimes, and now if I tell you that flying up is a lot smoother than flying down, how about you start with the end of the shot and then reverse it in post? Look at some of these examples. So check this out, I'm going to tell you now that this is a shot of Alina, she's nowhere to be seen. Do you think I could have flown that forwards and stopped right there on Alina? Absolutely not. The shot started at Alina and flew backwards. Same here, flying down through the trees. Do you think I have the pilot skill to descend the drone down through trees and stop right on the mark in front of the house? No, absolutely not. That shot was reversed. Start with the end point. Look at this fancy drone selfie. You don't know it's a drone selfie yet, it's just a shot of a landscape. Round we come, down we go, we start to see something there flying in towards two people, it's myself and Alina. It would take a lot of pilot skill to pull that off. Not if you start there and reverse it in post. Number three, visualize your shot. Begin with the end in mind. What is it you're actually trying to achieve? Don't just fly aimlessly. Pick your final spot, visualize it in your head. Can you fly there smoothly and unobstructed? Are you going to have to fiddle with the sticks during the shot and thereby invariably ruining that shot? Visualize it in your head. Look at these examples. So here we have a nice sweeping shot. The church is going from the right to the left of the shot. We know exactly what we want to achieve. We pass the flagpole. It doesn't come as a surprise that it's there. This is a forward moving shot. This is not a reversed shot. I'm flying forwards, bringing it to a gentle halt in front of the house with nice composition and nice framing. Nothing comes as a surprise. I knew exactly what I wanted to achieve before I even touched the sticks. Number four, film subjects. Subjects can add interest and storytelling to your shots. I know it can be a little bit more difficult to arrange, but if you can film some people or some cars or some rock bands or some tractors, then you're onto a winner. See what you can do there. Number five, fly low. Just because you can fly high doesn't mean you always should. Often the most interesting shots are low down shots. Look at these shots. Here we have a nice tracking shot along the beach. The drone's not much higher than head height. Same on this shot, we're just tracking Alina along. Look at that shot, it's so interesting. We come down here like it's a jib revealing Alina on the rock. Similarly, a crane shot here coming up through these trees revealing the valley in the background. Number six, use the time in between shots wisely. Battery life is a precious resource. You've just flown 400 meters that way and you want to do a shot behind you. So you're just gonna aimlessly fly it back and then do a shot behind you. No, use the opportunity to take the drone back and make a shot of it. Maybe rotate it around, get it from a different angle, point it down at the ground and fly in a nice smooth straight line back towards you. Often we find that these are some of the best shots. It takes us by surprise, maybe something happens. At the very least, there's no downside to doing that. Make the most of the battery life and make the most of those opportunities in between shots. Number seven, keep your shots short. Now this starts with the planning process all the way through to the editing process. If you visualize short shots, you will have short shots to edit. Long shots can be very, very boring unless there's a very specific reason for doing it. In this day and age, we're kind of used to drone shots, so just seeing a drone shot is not good enough anymore. It needs to be a nice, short, engaging shot. Keep your shots short. Number eight, wait for the lights. 
Patience is a virtue and especially in a country like Scotland, unlike some of you Americans, we don't have the luxury of fantastic weather all of the time. So we have to be patient. The difference that a bit of sunshine can make in terms of casting shadows, creating depth, making colours richer and just enhancing the image is just incredible. So if there's an option that that cloud is going to clear, sit tight and wait for it to clear and you will be rewarded. Check out this example. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a gorgeous shot. I mean, what a fantastic location, looks absolutely beautiful. There's quite a lot of color in there, but there's no direct sunlight. This, however, has direct sunlight, low evening sun. Just look at the shafts of light coming in, the shadows created by the sun, the richness of the colors, absolutely love it. Here's the shot from a different angle. Those sun flares are absolutely gorgeous. So if you have the luxury of waiting for the sun, wait for it and make the most of it. If you've made it this far, then you must be finding the video interesting. If so, click on the link in the description below, join our mailing list and join the Drone Film Guide Club. Okay, onwards. Number nine, be able to see your screen. Now here's a groundbreaking statement of the obvious, if ever there was one, but it's an important one. If you can't see your screen properly, be it because it's too small or because of the glare from the sun, then you could miss things on the shot. And you get the footage home and you think you've got this wonderful landscape only to find that there was a bin store there, or I don't know, some kind of factory in the background or people walking around that you didn't see and it can ruin your footage. So if possible, get yourself a nice big monitor, not a little iPhone like that, maybe an iPad mini, and also maybe a sun hood, one of those kind of screen protector things so that it cuts the glare from the sun. If those things aren't available to you, try and stand in the shadows. Try not to just stand out in the middle of the bright sunlight. The glare is going to spoil your view of the screen. Stand under a tree or wherever it is, but so you can still see what's going on in the sky. Number 10, fly with a partner. If possible, take someone along with you to help you fly. Now, by help you fly, I don't mean help you move the sticks. I mean, look out around, see what could go wrong, see what you could crash into, deal with passers-by that come up and want to talk to you. The only time I've crashed, uh, or come close to crashing, was when I wasn't with Alina. I completely rely on her. She is my eyes and ears. I'm just the idiot controlling the sticks. If it wasn't for her, I would have flown the drone back into a tree a hundred times more than this example right here, I have to say. Number 11, get a huge memory card. The biggest you can afford or the biggest that your drone can take and just leave it recording. Just leave it recording. Again, the number of times that I've not pressed record or I thought I pressed record but my finger was cold or I don't know, whatever it was that meant that that record button wasn't pressed properly. Get the drone back down, got to think I've got the best footage ever, find out it wasn't recording. Absolutely mind-numbingly frustrating. When you start the flight, press record, take off, check again that you press record and forget about it. Just leave it running. Honestly, you'll save yourself so much heartache. Number 12, back up your footage during your shoot. Related to the last point, if you've got this lovely big memory card, then you're gonna be able to get two hours of footage, maybe more on it, like we do with ours. So you're out on location getting the best shot ever. Oh, the light is so gorgeous. Can't believe it, 90 minutes of just glorious drone footage. Oops, you then go stick it in the water or get it stuck up a tree. Gone, not only is your drone, but the footage that was on it. So if possible, take a laptop with you on location, back up as you go, or find some other means of backing up as you go so that you're not at risk of losing all that lovely footage. Number 13, don't overexpose your shots. Now overexposure is the brightness in the highlights, those blown out highlights, be it on clouds or on waves or on snow or anything like that, don't overexpose it. If you bake that onto the memory card with the wrong exposure settings, you are stuck. You can't recover it in post and it looks terrible and it's the sure sign that you are not a professional. Do not overexpose your shots. Number 14, stranger danger. Avoid people. People are your enemy when it comes to flying drones. Best case, they want to come up and have a chat because they're dead interested about what you're doing. Worst case, and more often than not in our experience, they want to come and burn your ear about how you shouldn't be flying because they saw some article in a newspaper about how drones are bad. At the very least, in both situations, you're stuck there with the drone in the air trying to chat to someone and that is the last thing that you want. Prevention is the best cure. Don't fly in city centres, don't fly in public parks, don't fly in all the places you know you're not meant to. That's just the reality of what we do. Try and find the correct kind of location and create some beautiful footage and stay away from strangers. Number 15, keep it simple. Now we love all the complexities of intelligent flight modes and all the cool moves that you can do, but some of the best cinematic storytelling shots are nothing more than just flying forwards or flying sideways. It's as easy as that if the shot is planned and configured in a storytelling way. 
This is nothing more than just sliding to the side from behind a tree, revealing a castle, revealing a couple standing on the stairs. This is nothing more than flying up, it couldn't get any easier than that. But we have correctly exposed for silhouetted trees, we have a beautiful sun flare coming from the setting sun, we have clouds in the background. Easy move, beautiful result. Number 16, composition. Be smart about your composition if you want to remove unwanted elements from your shot. This is best explained by example, so I'll show you now. Now look at this shot, Alina standing on a rock in the middle of nowhere, only actually you can see she's not in the middle of nowhere, there's a building in the background. It's a minor detail but it spoils the perfection of this shot. As the shot pans around we can see the sense of openness and wildness and that building has spoiled it for me. Now we can't move that building, it's stuck there. So we recompose the shot, lower the drone down, hide the building behind the rock and we eliminate it from the shot. We get the same kind of result on the other side, but we didn't lose the illusion of emptiness and isolation by seeing that building. Number 17, where to stand. Now this is a kind of tricky one because you have to be able to see your drone, but you can't be in the shot. And if you're doing a big wide shot, then you could have a problem. But fortunately, there are loads of opportunities for standing in the shot, but not being seen. Look at these examples. So let's play where are Stuart and Alina hiding. We are in the shot. Can you see us yet? We're standing in the shadows there to the side of the building, you would never see us in that shot, but we can see what's going on. Have you figured out where we are in this one? Hiding behind the wall. Nowhere to be seen, but with a view of the drone. What about this one? We're in the shot. Standing in the shadows, lurking in the shadows, in the shot, able to see what's going on. Number 18, don't ignore your battery warnings. I know the battery warnings come in and you're like, oh, I've got so much more left. I can go fly out another 200 meters over the water and get another great shot. Don't ignore the battery warnings, especially if it's cold. We've nearly lost the drone a couple of times. These batteries need warmth to function properly and especially if they're getting low and it's cold outside or there's a cold wind blowing across the drone the whole time, you could get a sudden voltage drop. And next thing you know, instead of saying 25%, the battery is saying, 5% left and you could get a right panic like we did once. Also with the phones that we use, these iPhones are dreadful in the cold weather, just awful. So in some way, shape or form, keep it warm. Several times we've had the iPhone just switch off and I have to say the first time it happened, it gave us a right fright as well. So keep your batteries warm and don't ignore the warnings. Number 19, treat the weather with respect. Here's a top tip for you. It is a lot windier up there than it is down here. I'll show you what I mean. So here's a magic trick we performed in the Phantom 2, flying forwards at full speed while the drone goes backwards. It's a lot windier in the air than it is on the ground. If this happens to you, get the drone down. What about this one? Well, okay, clouds are wet. I think we could have figured that one out, but it didn't seem so obvious at the time, I have to say. It just looked a little bit misty until we got the drone down. And finally, number 20, don't be the first guy to update the firmware. These DJI updates that they keep pushing through are notorious for causing problems in one way, shape or form. I personally don't update the firmware until I absolutely have to. I just can't afford to have the system fail on me if I'm out on a commercial shoot. It is a professional tool. I can't have the software let me down. There's forums, Facebook groups, all that kind of stuff that will talk about the firmware updates. Try and get some kind of sense of how that update went before you do the same. So there you have it, our 20 tips. Now I have to say we have 200 tips and we could have talked for an hour on each one, but we had to keep your interest. So we kept it down to 20. Let us know if you have any more tips or things that you think are absolutely crucial to good filmmaking with a drone. If you do like the content, don't forget about our mailing list. There's a link in the description below. Sign up, become part of our community, and we'll send you details about those more in-depth tutorials as and when they're ready. In the meantime, see you next time on Drone Film Guide.